Good evening, everybody. It's Angie coming to you live at the end of what is known as Armed Forces Day. And I wanted to talk a little bit about this because um, I'm a veteran wife. So for about eight years, I lived as a military spouse. And um, you know, we went through three deployments, several um, TDYs, other extended um, times where we were without our service member at home. So um, it's a day that didn't used to mean much to our family, but we certainly appreciate all um, that the military does, has done, will continue to do, and you know, and I wanted to share a little bit about this day. This day was actually um, started as a holiday because of President Harry Truman. He did this um, when they first started. Um, there were individual celebrations for each branch of the military, but in August of 1949, Secretary of Defense Louis Johnson announced um, the creation of Armed Forces Day. So he unified, um, or all the, force, all the armed forces were unified under the Department of Defense, and so now we celebrate them all at once. So the first official one was May 20th, 1950, and was themed, Tamed for Defense. Um, in honor of the day, B-36 B bombers flew over the state capitals and a march was led by more than 10,000 veterans in Washington, D.C. and 33,000 people participated in New York City Parade. So it just shows a great um, amount of support and solidarity um, back at its founding. So this day has also formed an essential part in educating people about the military and the role that they play in the community. It wasn't just to honor the people who have served, but to, you know, let people know um, about the equipment used. Um, bases tend to be open on this day because it's not a federal holiday. And um, while there are security measures in place, some bases do allow you to tour different things and they have sections that are open to the public. Other countries also celebrate Armed Forces Day with us, which I thought was really interesting. Um, John F. Kennedy in 